Thank you, Speaker. Uh, I certainly appreciate the opportunity to speak to the bill, and I just uh, I don't know if uh, my the previous speaker, my colleague from the NDP party, knows that uh, we are actually uh, with an amendment supporting the uh, the motion. So, was it? Wasn't quite sure, and I uh, to, to understand that uh, she would uh, so vehemently uh, criticize the government when uh, the folks on this side of the house have the intention of supporting the, uh, the private members' bill. So I guess sometimes you should actually uh, uh, perhaps um, engage in the process that happens in this house, where we actually do try to work together. We try to come up with uh, solutions. Um, I see the nod of my head. My good good friend, the. Uh, from the NDP, the, the, the critic uh, at Heritage Committee, who oftentimes, while we may disagree, there are times that we do and understand when we need to work together. So um, disappointed very much in the language from the previous speaker in terms of uh, the tone. But I'm certainly uh, pleased to rise in the House to support the motion uh, M553, which advocates the development of a mechanism which would allow small airports to receive security screening services from the Canadian Air Transport Security Authority, Authority, commonly known, Mr. Speaker, as you know and have been through, uh, CATSA. The Government of Canada supports this motion as it highlights an issue of which the government is well aware and on which it would be working for a number of years and has been, that is to promote a safe and economically sustainable aviation industry. Indeed, this motion seeks to give small, non-designated airports all the necessary tools to draw commercial flights to their airports and connect their passengers to larger airports. Over the past several years, a number of small airports have expressed their belief that the establishment of screening services will help them attract more airlines, encourage commercial growth and improve their economic development opportunities in general. Mr. Speaker, I want to add uh, the Niagara Regional Airport from the region uh, of Niagara, the uh, part of uh, the area of which I represent, is certainly interested and has advanced uh, this thought through the Commission in, in, in a a very strong way and is working with uh, the Ministry of Transportation uh, at this very time to become one of those smaller airports that could potentially uh, receive the services of CATS. From an economic development perspective, having a link to the main air transportation network can have an important impact on a local economy. It brings visitors and potential investors closer and makes the local attractions and resources more accessible. The potential economic spin-offs can be significant in terms of economic investment and growth. Travel by air also provides an important service to local residents by better connecting them to the rest of Canada. Our government certainly supports those objectives. And while security is a key consideration when the time comes to allocate resources for the protection of our transportation system, other factors should also be taken into consideration to ensure that our aviation security system supports rather than hinders economic opportunities for smaller communities. Canada has one of the largest and strongest civil aviation systems in the world with over 200 commercial airports and millions of passengers travelling through or within the country daily. It would make little sense to require government mandated security screenings at all of these airports as it would be insufficient and, insufficient and ineffective use of security dollars, both from a security and from a financial perspective. Instead, security screening in Canada is limited to 89 airports currently designated for mandatory screening. The security designation of those airports was first established following the tragic events of September 11, 2001. And it included Canada's 29 largest airports as well as the 60 smaller airports who were already screening at that time either by, and was conducted either by the air carriers or the airport operators themselves. Together these airports represent almost 99% of all air passengers in Canada. The screening provided at these airports is currently government funded and offset through the passenger paid air traveler security charge. Several small Canadian airports, including my own, Mr. Speaker, the Niagara District Airport, have recently written to Transport Canada asking that the department explore the possibility of providing screening services at their facilities, not for security reasons necessarily, but rather to promote commercial growth and economic development. As I mentioned earlier, the primary rationale for passenger and baggage screening is risk. Accordingly, any changes to the current list of designated airports would have to be assessed against the risk threshold that would warrant mandatory screening. Currently, none of the airports requesting screening services from CATSA meet that threshold. My colleague, the Minister of Transport, advised these airports that if screening was to be provided at non-designated airports, 
where screening is not required for security purposes, an alternative source of funding would need to be identified. In response, a number of airports, including the Niagara District Airport, indicated that they would consider paying for the screening themselves, depending on the economic viability of assuming these costs. Transport Canada is currently holding discussions with all of these airports in order to present them with as much information as possible and to better, better understand their specific needs. Nevertheless, Canada's high security standards must be upheld. Therefore, the security, security screening services requested by these smaller airports, which will allow their passengers to connect seamlessly to larger airports, will need to be delivered by the officially designated CATSA. In addition, the annual operating cost for screening at small airports will depend on a number of factors, such as the number and frequency of flights, passenger volumes, size, size of planes, and a number of other factors. But once a solution is in place, Mr. Speaker, the decision as to whether it is financially viable will ultimately rest with each individual airport. Efforts to increase air service from small airports must take into account both market realities and airline objectives. Cities and regions want easy access, access and price competitive options for inbound visitors as well as for outbound residents. Airlines will need to determine for themselves what routes are worth pursuing. It is also important that the Canada Canadian Air Transport Security Authority remain the sole screening authority for delivering screening services at Canadian airports. Having a single centralized organization responsible for screening services allows for greater consistency in, in meeting security requirements and managing security incidents. As such, we have asked that the original version of the motion be amended as it could incorrectly imply that an entity other then the Canadian Air, Air Transport Security Authority could carry out screening services. In short, Mr. Speaker, small airports' requests for CATSA screening reflect a desire to further economic and commercial growth. The Government of Canada shares these objectives and will do what it can to accommodate these requests. The Government continues to be open to exploring mechanism, mechanisms that will assist in finding ways to drive economic development at smaller airports and in those communities. Should they choose to invest in these services, and I must be clear, Mr. Speaker, should they choose to invest in those services means that those individual airport commissions or boards are going to take on responsibility for the cost. Nonetheless, developing such a mechanism will take a bit of time as there are still legal and financial challenges to be addressed. But our aim, Mr. Speaker, going forward will be to ensure that the aviation security system continues to be effective, assist, efficient and responsive to, rapid, to the rapidly evolving industry. It's about getting it right for both air travellers and for taxpayers. As such, Mr. Speaker, the Government of Canada will continue its efforts to meet the needs of the small airports and is grateful to the Honourable Member for Sherbrooke for his support on this issue. And Mr. Speaker, I know there are a number of um, members of Parliament on this side of the House uh, that have smaller airports uh, in their regions, in their, uh, their ridings and in their districts, uh, and uh, I'm one of those. And I know that on this side of the House we have worked closely with the Minister of Transport to help to try to effectively move uh, forward on the security screening that will allow the type of development, uh, the type of economic development, the type of travel, uh, the type of options that really present um, smaller airports with an option to, uh, uh, to land uh, people in their region. Uh, in, at their airport to be able to um, use the, um, uh, the great uh, areas upon which they will travel to. Uh, and it also allows those that live in those communities to access uh, larger uh, communities, larger um, airports, uh, both within Canada and potentially outside of Canada. Uh, so, Mr. Speaker, I think what we have is a, is a situation that, uh, while a piece of legislation and its original intent uh, was meant to uh, drive at that issue of safety and security at airports, uh, but at the same time, it, it did leave out some of the smaller airports across our country. Uh, that could be very viable in terms of um, delivering, uh, whether it be charter, whether it be uh, larger airlines, into their um, regions. And Mr. Speaker, I think the motion uh, speaks uh, to that issue and actually enhances and moves us forward. And uh, I uh, would like to comment too, Mr. Speaker, in closing, the Minister of Transport has been extremely open to looking at these options. Uh, and I know that she understands the direction, the, in, the intent of this bill, and certainly supports it as well. Thank you.